control statements and for loop what do we mean by for loop and what is the use of a for loop so if you want to print a particular statement or want to iterate a particular statement a particular block of times then you can go to code with the help of for loop programmers usually use loop to execute a set of statements again and again by not writing the system dot out print ln statement n number of time you can use a loop so the first control statement or loop which we are going to talk about is for loop i will discuss about the for loop first and then we will implement a program of for loop so the for loop is used when you need to iterate a part of program multiple times that means execution of a part of program n number of times then we use the particular for loop now to understand you can get an understanding of better of how actually a loop works i'm going to show you a particular flow chart for example a program starts and firstly what we do we initialize the variables so the initialization occurs as the first step next what happens next we give a certain condition to check a particular value or to check a particular condition with the help of the statements which we have studied or the operators which we have studied we can check a particular condition now if the condition met is false then automatically the program will end it will terminate there is no use but if that particular statement is true then what it is going to occur a particular statement is going to be printed a particular value is going to be printed for example a particular statement is going to print then after printing that particular statement you came to know that this particular case can be used for more number of times then why to write so many times system dot out print ln statement and usually heap your own stack of code so what we can do is we can apply a loop here and then what we can do we can actually help with the increment and the decrement operators which we have studied that the plus plus operators or the minus minus operator with that particularly we can execute a loop for printing a statement or for checking a condition again and then again printing the statement so this is how the flow diagram or the for loop executes initialization then the condition is checked if it is false then automatically the loop will terminate if it is true then it will print certain statement and then again check for the condition or how many times you want to execute a particular loop so if your condition is false then it will automatically exit and the loop will get terminated now we are going to discuss about the syntax of the for loop that how can you actually write a particular for loop what is the syntax for that firstly starting the loop you have to use the keyword for then you have to give the statement 1 separated by a semicolon statement 2 separated by another semicolon and then statement 3 which is usually the increment or the decrement of the loop this is how is done and then the rest of the code is written so this is particularly the statement for the for loop that statement one separated with semicolon always remember to separate with semicolon otherwise you will get an error so if condition before the code block is executed then statement one it specified the condition of the execution for the code block that up till how this particular code is to be executed this loop is to be executed that is done with the help of statement two and the condition once the code is executed that is given to the statement three that either it has to increment and again run the loop or just exit from the loop that condition is given here now we will discuss about an example of for loop so what i'm going to do is i want to print the numbers from 0 to 5 with the help of a loop rather than writing the system dot out print ln statement five times so what i can do i can execute the for loop for that what i have to do is for keyword i will use from where i want to start i is i am taking as a variable of iteration or any variable you can take i am starting this with 0 next what i am going to do is up till how much value i want to run the loop i want to run this particular loop for less than 5 and then what i am going to do this particular i will be incremented which we have studied in our previous video that printing then increment and then again it will be printed up till when up till when i is less than 5 this loop will execute and this loop will execute then it must show the user something so that he or she can check that the loop is executing so in the sop statement system dot out print ln statement what i am going to print is i i am going to print now what this i will do this i will exactly print the values of loop 
that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and then the loop terminates why because it is has to execute for less than 5 and it has executed here for the 5 no it cannot execute for the 6 because it doesn't meet the condition so this is how this loop will execute and this is a very basic example for the for loop so now let us execute this program in our id and see how for loop gets executed so here you can see that I have firstly created a class naming loop 1 and then these all things are quite clear to you up till now I guess that the public static void means string ARGS. What we have to check is here the for loop it is initialized first from 0 to less than 5 and then i++ plus plus, the value gets incremented and what is it printing it is printing the value of i at every step. So I have saved this particular code and now I run this loop. So as I run this particular loop here you can see that in the terminal side in the console that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The values get printed up to 4 as the loop cannot execute less than 5. So it has to be printing the less than 5 values. It cannot execute for greater than 5. Now it is not necessary that you have to print i only. You can also print here any certain thing which you want to check that how many times the loop has executed. So I have written here hello in the place of i. And if I again run this particular code here, then it will print 5 times hello. That is 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So it's actually the 5 times the hello is printed. So this is the SOP statement and execution of a loop that how many times it occurs. So it gets printed from 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And just so that you can check the values of the numerical or ex exactly count that how many times that loop has executed, we write here. I. Next, I am going to execute a pattern program with the help of for loop. So here you can see a pattern which I have built of the pyramids using the asterisk sign. This is the particular pattern which I want to print with the help of a for loop. So you can see here there are certain rows and the column keeps on incrementing. So you can see here that there are five rows and the columns are four columns are there starting from one, two, three and four columns are there. So what we have to do is we can use two for loops. Now when I use two for loops that comes to the nested loop. Nested loop means when one particular loop executes but in the condition the other loops also execute. For example here I am writing a for loop in the bracket there is another execution of for loop then it can be said that it is nested this loop condition execute then this will automatically execute after checking the values that is the nested condition say that i am using this particular loop for printing the rows and i'm using this particular for loop for printing the columns so this is how this for loop will execute now the major thing in the loops is you have to check for the condition that what condition you can give for example for the first for loop which we are going to write if i equals to 1 and the increment value will go less than equals to 5 for less than and equals to 5 this loop will print why because there are only 5 rows which we can see and then the value will be incremented of the rows that is i plus plus next in that particular loop another loop will be there that will be printing the columns addition of columns will be printed so j will also begin from 1 and j will execute less than equals to the times of i because every column is proceeding with the rows you can see here so row keeps incrementing then the column keeps incrementing so it is a logic that you can execute it less than equals to the time of rows and then again you can increment the columns also and in the system dot out print ln statement what we want to print in this particular loop we want to print the asterisks because that's what the user wants us to print or the particular question wants us to print and after that you can see the execution of this particular pyramid is in the next line here you can see that it is a line it is another line so what we have to do is we have to use a new line so after this particular loop is executed we can use a sop statement just a blank statement we can give for the new line of this particular row for loop that if one row is executed that means if firstly this one particular asterisk or the pyramid sign is done then in the new line it will print the next for row 2 and then the column will be incremented with 1 similarly row 3 and the column will be incremented with 2 and that's how it goes so now let us execute this program also here you can see that i have written the code which i have explained you also the for loop is been initialized with i equals to 1 for the rows and j equals to 1 for the columns and it is executing as much time as the rows is executing the last condition. In the system dot out print we have used the asterisk symbol and separated it with a space and for the next line generation of the row so that it prints in the next line we have used the system dot out print ln statement. As I run this particular code you can see here 
that the particular pyramids get printed you can see here this is the party i've highlighted it also this is the pyramid of the rose which get printed with the help of for loop for more programs we will look into upcoming videos